بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ایوری ون وی ہیو اسٹارٹیڈ اے چیپٹر آف دا بیسک آرگینک کیمسٹری ان وچ ان دا فرسٹ لیکچر وی ہیو ڈسکس دا انڈکٹیو ایفیکٹ اینڈ ناؤ ان دس لیکچر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس این ادر ٹاپک وچ از ویری بیسک فار دا آرگینک کیمسٹری اینڈ دیٹ از دا ہائپر کانجوگیشن وچ از آلسو نون ایز دا نو بانڈ ریسونینس so let's discuss its introduction first whenever we talk about the delocalization of the electrons in our mind suddenly the pi electrons they strike our mind because delocalization is mostly associated with the pi electrons pi electrons are loosely held so they move about in the whole molecule or in the whole crystal lattice uh, that's why they are called as the delocalized electron But you know, delocalization of sigma electrons is also possible. But for that, there is a condition. That groups like CH, methylene or methyl should be attached to a carbon having double bond. This is the condition. If this condition is met, then the hyperconjugation will be observed. Otherwise, there will be no resonance of the sigma electrons. Now, <clears throat> let us discuss what is this. no bond resonance suppose that this one is an alkene in front of you having double bond between first and the second carbon now what happens this hydrogen shifts its bond here so instead of single bond a double bond is created between these two carbon atoms <coughs> and in order to justify its valency because carbon cannot form more than four bonds so this pi bond will be shifted to the next carbon as a result this hydrogen will get positive charge here will be no bond you will be thinking how it is possible that there is no bond between two atoms in a molecule <coughs> sorry actually what happens is that here is the bond which is weaker than a normal single bond or you can say that here is the bond which is a case of a single bond intermediate case of a single bond or no bond and here this carbon gets negative charge now again this pi bond that will be shifted here and the negative charge electron will be shifted here so this molecule will again change in this and in this way the shifting of the electrons that will keep on taking place and these are two are the canonical forms of this compound or you can say hybrid form of this compound now let us discuss another example of the hyperconjugation with a special reference to toluene methyl benzene this one is the methyl benzene now what happens this hydrogen any of these three hydrogens i have mentioned this one this hydrogen shifts its bond here and this pi bond is shifted to this ortho position as a result here there was single bond but after shifting of this bond it will become a double bond and because of shifting of two electrons to this carbon it will get negative charge and you know when the charge comes on benzene it keeps on moving them now this negative charge electron they will form pi bond here and it will shifts its pi electron so it will get this form now this hydrogen which has shifted its bond here it gets positive so there is no bond resonance again i am repeating it doesn't mean that there is no bond it simply means that this bond is weaker than the normal single bond or it is an intermediate case of the single bond or no bond then this negative charge will further move and now this position will get negative charge and finally it will again move its electron here and this bond will be moved here and again you will get another form so these are different canonical forms of the toluene in which the sigma bond electron which are between carbon and hydrogen 
that sigma bond orbital is overlapping with the p orbital of the next carbon carbon bond so in this way these are different forms of the toluene so that's why hyperconjugation proves that the dipole moment of the toluene should be 0.37 d by as it should not be equal to zero as in the case of the benzene because in benzene there is no hyperconjugation so in order to make it more clear let us discuss another example this one is propyne this one is first carbon second carbon and third carbon now what happens any of these three hydrogens i have mentioned this one it shifts its bond here so instead of single bond a double bond is created and this hydrogen becomes h positive same move no bond case and then when here will be double bond these are three bonds this carbon will be having five bonds so it will shifts it bond here this carbon will get negative charge and again this arrangement that will be changed to the first one when the negative carbon will shift its bond here again a triple bond is created and then this bond is again shifted to its original position and these two forms keep on changing in one another why all this is happening because it gives stability to this molecule hyperconjugation also gives stability now very important point when the bond length between carbon 2 and 3 was calculated you know whenever carbon carbon single bond is there its bond length is 1.54 angstrom but when this was calculated it was 1.47 angstrom slightly less than the 1.54 angstrom why because sometime it is single bond and sometime it is double bond but the bond length very important please listen it carefully but the bond length for the double bond that is 1.34 so this bond length is neither equal to the single bond not equal to the double bond it is an intermediate case which means that this bond is sometimes single and sometimes it is a double bond what is the importance of this hyperconjugation concept i have taken example of a tertiary carbonyl in which this is the positively charged carbon these are two methyl groups and this one is the third methyl group now what happens this bond is shifted here due to which a double bond is created with between these two carbons and here again this hydrogen gets h positive now listen very carefully very carefully that if this single hydrogen can do this no bond resonance this can also do second third then 3 6 and 3 9 out of which one i have shown here because of this hydrogen and there might be the remaining eight structures like this with the remaining eight hydrogens so there will be eight other structures of the tertiary carbocation now what's about the secondary carbocation it is secondary now this one is the carbon which is in the form of positive carbocation form and here are the two methyl groups attached to it now again this hydrogen shifts its bond here and because the bond is shifted here there will be no bond resonance and here will be the double bond no other than this hydrogen there are how many other hydrogens which can do this hyperconjugation 1 2 and 3 this so five other structures are possible hybrid structures are possible for the secondary carbocation in case of no bond resonance the hydrogen which is attached to this carbon it will not play any role in the hyperconjugation it will remain at its place now what's for the primary carbocation in case of primary carbocation these three hydrogens can show the phenomena for the hyperconjugation if this bond is shifted here it there will be double bond and here no bond resonance now because of this hydrogen these are the this one is the one hybrid structure how many more hybrid structures are possible 
there are two other hydrogens so two more hybrid structures are possible greater the number of hybrid structures which are possible because of hyperconjugation greater is the stability of cation so this hyperconjugation also proves that tertiary carbon is tertiary carbocation is the most stable and primary carbocation is the least stable while in case of methyl there will be no hyperconjugation as there is only a single carbon here hyperconjugation is very important which explains the stability of the carbocation and the stability of carbocation is very important for studying the mechanisms of the organic reaction so overall it is very important but hyperconjugation is not as much important as the resonance is in which we discuss the shifting of the pi bonds or pi electrons or delocalization of the pi electrons so delocalization of the pi electrons no doubt is more important but it never means that the sigma electron they do not show delocalization so this hyperconjugation explains the stability of the molecules it explains why the different species rearrange themselves during the mechanism why a secondary carbocation prefers to change to the tertiary carbocation if possible during the reaction and this stability criteria then plays a very important role in deciding the kinetics in deciding the steps in deciding the molecularity in deciding the pathway of any reaction this was a slight discussion about the hyperconjugation i hope so it will be informative for you people we will come up with some new lecture next time inshallah till then take care allah hafiz